Hi, welcome to another edition of the Firefighter's Commute, where we hope to mentor you on your firefighting travels. You're with Captain Dave and Engineer Lisa. He towards it. We are now talking about body mechanics. Um, as you can tell, I'm a female, and... You know, I'm not a small female. I'm not a large female either. I'm 5'7", weigh 150. Um, I have a lot of muscle mass, but uh, that was built in. And body mechanics has been pretty big for me because I'm doing, you know, tasks of a 6 foot 2, 220 pound guy. And so um, I have to be physically in good shape with good cardio rebound to be able to do the job that I'm doing. So we're going to talk about body mechanics. And, um, you know, I've worked with people who are smaller than I, who are actually, like, stronger per square inch than I am. So I've seen smaller people be able to do the job I'm doing, and I've been able to do the job that bigger people are doing, too. So it really all depends on how you know your body and how you use your body. Um, so we're just going to go over some body mechanics. So for ladders, like a 24-foot long ladder, you have to use a lot of your fast twitch muscle fibers to kind of get the ladder from your strong spot through your weak spot back to your strong spot again. Um you know, you shimmy a lot and you bend with your legs a lot. You do become a fulcrum point, so you want to make sure that your body mechanics are on track and that you're not too stiff. It's kind of like when you're uh, skiing down moguls. You want to make sure your knees are super flexible and bend. Otherwise, you're going to have injuries happen. Um, as far as gurneys go, when we go to pick up gurneys, I started off with the old furnos that you actually had to pick up from the ground. There's hydraulic ones now. Um, but when you go to load up a patient into the back of a gurney, sometimes your ambulance is, or into the back of the ambulance, sometimes your ambulance is on a hillside and you have to come up a couple inches and it throws your body mechanics off because physically you're not strong from your abdomen to your chest area. So you have your pull up to your abdomen area and then you have your push from your chest up where you're really strong. And it's that midsection of your body where you're not so strong. So if you know your strengths and your weaknesses of your body, then you can accommodate how to use your body for those positions. So for gurneys, when I go to pick up a gurney, I'm really strong at lifting from a squat back up. But sometimes if I have to go to that extra high position, if the ambulance is on a slope or however the gurney is not sitting quite right, um, I actually, for how, you know, most of, throughout most of my career, I would pick the gurney up and kind of rest it on my belt buckle. So then it was tied to me, and I didn't have to support the whole load by myself. That way I could go up to my tippy toes and get that extra one or two inches to get the gurney in the way I need to. Also, I would pull my body in straight. I'd pull my arms straight into my body and lock in. My forearms would rest on my hips, and I'd use um, my skeletal versus my muscle groups at that time because muscle groups fatigue, but your skeletal will always maintain. And then that kind of leads into cirque saws. Um, I have a female who works on a truck, and I was going to do some cuts, and we were practicing out back with some rebar, you know, um, security bars and windows, and she was like, go ahead and do some cuts, so I did some cuts, and she said, okay, sister, you got it all wrong, you need to use your skeletal because your muscles will fatigue, and if you're cutting, um, you know, uh, doors open, commercial steel roll-up doors or whatever, if you're cutting these doors for long periods of time, your muscles will fatigue the way that the circ saw gyrates and the amount that you actually have to cut. So we went over how to position and hold yourself with cirque saws, and um, if you need to make a forward slice downward motion, you can take your elbow and drive it right into your hip, and then you bend at your legs, and then you can start up really high and come down low. If you're making a horizontal cut, you rest the body of the cirque saw right on your shoulder versus holding it up above your head and relying on your muscles. So knowing how your body works and Using your skeletal is definitely key for ladders, gurneys, and cirque saws, and that's just coming from me. You know, I'm an average strong person, but um, knowing how to use your body to benefit you is definitely a plus. And that's my body mechanics section. Body mechanics <laughs> section. Body moving, body moving. Um, anything to add on that? Uh, with the your body mechanics section. Uh, in order to accomplish those things, I, uh, I can identify some linchpins in the body armor. Oh, wait. Ch kinks in the armor? What's the chink in the armor, right? Chink, chink in the armor. Chink in the yeah. armor uh, is uh, what I would call my a higher acronym, H-I-R-E, is uh, your needing and your ability to hold something, H, hold something heavy, uh, I, invert, um, and what that will develop is your upper body strength in order to hold those circ saws up to a, a level and get in, engage that skeletal framing that you were wisely taught uh, 
it doesn't matter what size you are. You're, you're, it, it's just a matter of small amount of time, and your muscles are going to fatigue, guy or girl. That's why you need to engage that framework. Um, but if you can't get any of those circular saws or the things of weight or tools up to your shoulder level, you, that's why you need to be able to uh, invert and do handstand push-ups to build upon that. Um, Lisa's got uh, pretty much all of these things. If uh, she's got the <laughs> she's got the physique, she's, she's got the H is the hold something heavy. Her her grip strength is uh, amazing. She can invert and do handstand push-ups because her upper body strength and her shoulders are all uh, loked out. I'm like uh, blushing because a pickle jar she, got me the other day. <laughs> Actually, I'm like, I can't get this pickle jar. <laughs> and, the, and there's an R in there. It's called recovery. Uh, how fast can you recover after you do a whole bunch of engaging activity? Um, and uh, your, your body mechanics and, and doing all of these forms is so uh, dependent upon your uh, physical strength. You know, you I can't, can't believe you had an acronym for this. Like, yeah, did you just I sit did, here and, and invent e, it, or did you already know this? The E is explosiveness, and I, I would say if you could do burpees, 25 burpees you have. Uh, uh, the higher acronym that I developed is to coach people through the physical ability section. It's in the, the 25 the steps. The literature. Become, I'm just surprised. I had no idea that there was an actual body. acronym, so I, too, was listening as a first-time newbie. We have not discussed this, but uh, I do. I do like that. It's good to kind of know where you're at, and I wouldn't have thought about inversions. Oh, yeah. If you could do um, a handstand push-up, most people can't even hold I only started those a few years ago. Um, I don't really like going upside down very often, so I don't do them, but I totally can do them. Uh, it's, uh, the and in fact, have you seen up. some of those CrossFitters? They're like um, kipping inverted handstands. Like you can actually move your body to kip and help you help uh, propel yourself God. up. I mean, I did enough destruction to my body messing up on a crossfit <laughs> workout i know enough people that did i, I thought really it was cool though because i have always just done them strict and then i saw that you could actually start kipping inverted and i'm like ah oh, why didn't i try yeah. that yeah. you get the timing off just a little bit wrong and you're you're, you're doing a headstand push-up you know and, uh, <laughs> and, and the reason why i brought it up was it's the fastest way out of a gym that you can develop your body to the, to meet the minimum needs of becoming a firefighter is if you could do 25 handstand push-ups if you could do 25 burpees so i have to admit i was like a runner or i was doing machine type work um you know i had in my academy some olympic lifting and some crossfit motions but um i was trained i don't know if you remember this this is going to jog your memory you're gonna have to think back but i was working with you and i was starting to look into training for half marathon and you're like, try this CrossFit, do this. You know, it's like that HIT, H-I-I-T kind of workout where you're maximizing your time and you're really working out to your anaerobic capacity. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. So not once did I run over seven miles training for my um, half marathon, but I still got an hour 52. So I averaged between like six and eight miles and I never even ran like hardly any miles. All I did was CrossFit and I took off running. <laughs> And my stepdad was super upset because he's like, that's not even fair. You weren't even doing like the three miles one day, two miles the next day. He was he was very upset that I was able to run a really good times half marathon. CrossFit is the shit. <laughs> CrossFit. That is, oh, God. But it, so, it, it, and my but body comp totally changed, too. And, of course, you know, I ate paleo and, like, I was like, ooh. Oh but it was, uh, it was like a really big eye-opener for me because I feel like I've been pretty fit for a long time. And. Here I trained for a half marathon, but yet never ran any miles. That killed it. <laughs> I was really impressed with myself. The thing that kills them is that the people who are competitive, they they get they get in over their head. Their their uh, their front line exceeds their logistical support. <laughs> so they're, they're like stabilizing muscles and ligaments and, and tendons, which take longer to develop, aren't able to keep up, and you get this devastation because uh, their ego is just one step ahead of the muscle and the muscle <laughs> is a couple of steps ahead of the ligaments and the ligament you know and eventually you get the and then the them. the yoga people are one step ahead of anybody because then you get me and you know i'm like Woo-hoo, look at how strong i am and then i go to yoga with a lot of like women and i'm like the only person shaking <laughs> so that i'm was like my i'm glad i'm doing that because i'm working on my stabilizer muscles that sometimes get left out and and uh and uh, along with that so with the development of your body it allows you to perform proper mechanics to do the job of ladder throwing and gurney holding and circular saw bracing and what not that was my input okay